The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 12, Spiritual Teaching 342, Love Each Other. 1. Disciples, you attend once again the act of transmission of my teaching, full of faith, because you know that they are the last lessons that I come to give you. The Holy Spirit comes to teach His very beloved children. It is the fullness of time. It is the year 1950, announced to the people of Israel as the last in which they will have my word in this way. You rush your pass and you prepare your heart to keep in it all the essence which I am pouring out my charity. You prepare your spirit and you ask me for understanding, to understand each of my sentences. Do you consider the humanity behind you who have not heard these revelations, who still live in darkness and weep in the depths of your spirit? You would like to share with your brothers in these teachings, and the Divine Master tells you, wait, before you prepare, so that you can sow your first grain. 2. Not everyone will hear me this way, people. Many are called and few are chosen. This cause, leave it in my hand, but I will judge your work from the moment you have heard my word. I will judge the generations that have passed from 1866 to the present year, and to each one I will give according to his farm. I can only tell you people, you can still repair your faults, you still have opportunities to fulfill your mission. If today your lips have been clumsy, if your hearts have been like a rock, and have not heard the voice of the call, wait. I am preparing all humanity. I am leading his spirit and cultivating his heart. All the trials she is experiencing lead her to a propitious end, which is spirituality, but before it will be purification. 3. For you to be able to reach me, humanity, it is necessary that you wash yourself, that you purify your spirit, so that you can look at me and feel me. When I call you, do not hide your face, do not be ashamed of your past, because before, I will allow you to have washed all your faults and to have dignified yourselves. 4. Therefore, people, do not be afraid if you do not contemplate great crowds around me, for now, prepare yourselves in union with each other. From each one, I have to serve myself, and this seed that I have sown will multiply. Propitious times will come for spirituality. Today you only find obstacles, chains that prevent you from passing, but the time of spiritual liberation for all will come, and then your thought and word will be like a current that has to bathe the fields of humanity. 5. Today you feel the responsibility of having listened to me, of having believed my word, that each lesson of mine is in order for you, that my law rests in your spirit, and that in a thousand ways I have explained it through human understanding. I contemplate the steps that you will take tomorrow, and for this I have prepared you. I have spoken to you, opening the paths, so that your spirit does not stumble in trials. I have given you prophecies so that you do not stop, but search in the treasury that I have formed within your heart, the light that you need to solve the test that is presented in the path. 6. Who of you can say that he is ignorant or innocent, if I have given you light, if I have prepared you, if my word has opened a way within you, and I am cultivating the seed that I have sown in your heart? Do not fear, people of Israel. If you have faith in the gifts that I have given you, keep going. Be stronger every day in your faith, more firm in your will, so that nothing and no one can stop you in your path. I prepare you as warriors, because you are going to fight against darkness, because you are going to fight against evil, because you are going to soften the hard hearts and to purify the minds of men who are inveterate in selfish sciences and erroneous sciences. 7. That is why the Divine Master invites you to pray and meditate. 
I have always told you, analyze my word and each one of my manifestations so that you can become my disciples and thus face all the trials and vicissitudes that you are going to find. But you know well that you are not alone on the path of your life. You are accompanied by spiritual beings, servants of my divinity, the virtuous creatures, those who come to you contemplating your weakness to help you, to give you your spiritual vision when you do not have it, those who come to strengthen your faith when you weaken. 8. I have allowed the higher spirits, the virtuous spirits that inhabit close to me, to help. So people, if everyone helps you, if your master guides you, if my teaching is your bulwark, what are you to fear? Why should your hearts be frightened if you are prepared? 9. Study yourselves spiritually, examine your thoughts and hearts, read in the book that I have given you since the moment of the call, and think how many pages I have written in your heart, how many prophecies I have entrusted to you, how Elijah has given you many announcements, and how much preparation the spiritual world has given you. 10. Many years have passed since the day I opened this book in the third era, and many of you have listened to me since that time. Then, people, if you have kept those lessons in your spirit, the day will come when you can open the book on the page that you will need and read as you need it. This book contains infinite lessons. It will not be closed in 1950, but will remain open in eternity, only in a different way than you have today. 11. I have come to speak to you through man to teach you spiritual communication with your Father and in the spirits that inhabit the higher regions so that you can read in that great book forever. 12. When you develop the gift of communication with my spirit, you will no longer seek the books of the earth because in that book you can read and know everything you need. The sciences of good will be revealed to you. Love will come to solve big problems. Peace and charity will be the precious gifts that will accompany you, and you will feel stronger than you ever had been because you will receive the explanation of great teachings. You can read in front of your brothers in that inner book which I have inherited to give you the light, and they will come to you, people of Israel, because you are the possessor of my disclosures. But this privilege is not only yours, this gift is for all my children. They will all follow the path of spirituality and will seek communication from spirit to spirit. 13. You will be forerunners of these revelations, as you have always been, because I have sent you to earth. I have given my commands telling you, take my message of salvation to humanity, speak firmly, preach and prophesy according to my will. 14. You are in preparation, people. You cannot say that you have already reached the full development of gifts. You have given your first steps in the privacy of these meetings, but later, when they ask for proof, and it is my will to grant them through you, give charity. But before, clothe yourselves with humility. Do not despise my word. Do not sow barren land. Develop your intuition so that you speak by my will at the propitious hour to approach the table of your master to the portion that I am going to point out to you. 15. Today you live in the land designated by my will in which peace, humility, and hospitality have flourished. This nation has been your home and in its bosom you have had the fulfillment of my word. I announced my new coming, and I have kept my word. My work has been completed. If you have not met yet, I give you the necessary time, more, as Father have I fulfilled among you, and according to your advance, thus I have spoken to you. According to your preparation, thus I have poured out my word for the understanding and understanding of it. I have not spoken to you with incomprehensible language, but with simple word, available to everyone, so you can understand it. 
I have gathered you, I have prepared you, and I have made you know the gifts that were already in your spirit, and I have only confirmed them, because the matter that you carry ignored them. 16. You, as children of the people of Israel, knew what has been written from the beginning. You knew your destiny, you felt your responsibility, but it was necessary to incarnate on earth that my word become human so that you understand my will and my commands. You have come to the aid of humanity in the moments when it weakens, in which it drains its most bitter cup, in which the expiation has reached the limit. You have settled your plant in this nation and I have told you your whole being is prepared to become a balm and charity among humanity. 17. Practice so that they may recognize you and bear witness that you are my envoys. So I have prepared you and I can still contemplate doubt in some. But here are the tests that will give you the light that you need. Tests of infinite numbers of love that I have prepared for everyone. 18. Prepare and deepen each other whenever you listen to my lesson. Do not look at it on the surface. Penetrate its meaning so that you can dwell at this time in the spiritual regions close to me and be able to contemplate the events of the beyond. 19. I have come to manifest myself in a simple way without ostentation to teach you humility and it is my will that in these simple manifestations you can contemplate and sense its greatness. I have given you the gifts of the Spirit so that through them you can contemplate me, hear me and feel me in all your being. I have touched all the sensitive fibers of your heart and I have caressed with my word. No human word has given you the recreation, the peace and the sweetness that this teaching has given you. By this word given and by this flavor by this essence that I pour into it, you will be able to recognize me. 20. After the year 1950, you will be firmer in your belief. Your convictions will be stronger. You can remember with respect and veneration the hours in which my universal ray communicated by human understanding words to strengthen you, to guide you, to comfort you. Thus in the second era I said to my disciples, it is necessary that the Son of Man dies so that he may be believed. In the third era, I tell you, after the completion of my word through the conduit of man, I will be better believed and loved. 21. You have commemorated in this time the years of my preaching, those three years in which I prepared my disciples and that I lived with them. They contemplated all my works, and in their preparation they managed to penetrate my heart and contemplate purity, all the majesty and wisdom that was in the Master. At that time I did not show ostentation. My step on the earth was humble, but the one who was prepared sensed the greatness of my presence and the time that I lived. So I chose my disciples. I found some of them on the bank of the river, and I called them, saying, Follow me. When they posted their gaze on me, they understood who it was that was speaking to them, and thus, one by one, I was choosing. 22. They followed me, faithful to their spirit, obedient to my command, understanding my love, and they kept in their hearts the treasure entrusted to them. They did not want that flow to be lost, and after a while of my departure, they wrote and printed my word, so that it would not be erased from the minds and hearts of the great generations that were to come, and those who did not listen to me. They wrote inspired by my spirit, so that those writings would not be adulterated. However, men have adulterated, they have misinterpreted, but the original writings were my true word. 23. I have announced the charges. I have chosen you all, and on your forehead I have marked you with my mark. To some I have said, prepare yourselves so that you can prophesy. To the others, be prepared so that you can communicate to the crowds the in spiritual inspiration. 
and I have prepared others so that the universal ray, communicated by their understanding, can give to know my word. 24. I have entrusted to all of you precious gifts, gifts of the Spirit, eternal gifts. You have not chosen only at this stage in which you live. You have already possessed these virtues before, and after this time you will continue to possess them. But I tell you that depending on your preparation, so will its development. I will not allow your spirit to park. I will prepare for it always the ascending path, the ladder that leads to me. Because in my kingdom there is a place prepared for each one of you, and time is short. It is necessary that you hasten your pace so that you can, in a short time, conquer the place that is pointed out to your spirit. 25. Are there hierarchies in my kingdom? You don't know. I only tell you, strive, fight, so that you can reach the development of all your gifts, so that you can understand me through them, so that you can love me and fulfill your mission at all times. 26. Today you inhabit the earth, and tomorrow a new path has to be prepared for you, and in that instant in which the spirit has to reach the threshold of this world, I have to call him to hold him accountable and lead him to a new life. 27. I am not speaking in the desert. Large crowds hear my voice in all the venues, in all the meetings that have been prepared. But Elijah is your guide. He is the one who gives you the prophecies. He is the one who prepares you. He is the forerunner. Feel it forward, always close to you. 28. Whenever a trial afflicts you, invoke Elijah, who is light, who is the one who prepares the way, and in that instant of test, Elijah and I will be with you. 29. These are the last times of my word. That is why I speak to you this way, because I do not want you to be confused or scattered. 30. You will continue to meet. You will continue to help each other. Each one will manifest their gifts. The seer will prepare to receive the message when it is my will, the announcement, the light that will guide this people. And so each one, according to his gifts, must practice without selfishness, with all humility, with all elevation of spirit, knowing that he is writing in the great book of eternity. Each of your works will be judged by your children, by your successors, knowing that it is the work that I have entrusted to you, the work of the Holy Spirit. 31. On this day, I anoint you. I leave you prepared as a family. Watch. Everyone prepare so that you can, with your prayer, help the nations, the rulers, all those who have great responsibility, because on the will of all these creatures are my will. There is my law of inexorable justice, and together with the law of expiation, the law of love. 32. This is said. Everyone who is lacking will wash, atone for his fault, but in his atonement will be comforted by the Holy Spirit. 33. I am the Comforter. I am the promised Spirit of Truth. Since the times of the patriarchs announced was this a time when men would drain the bitterest chalice. From that time it was said that the Comforter was to come among you to accompany you in the hour of the test. 34. Thus I have fulfilled my word. Thus I have prepared you, people of Israel. Also, you as my disciples, I fill you with charity, consolation and love. Recognize your gifts. Practice them along the way. Work with your thinking and prayer so that you can be balm among humanity so that you can stop the advance of evil. 35. My law is in each one of you, the positions also, the latent gifts, the senses and prepared powers, the eyes of the spirit open, sensitive consciousness, because it is the divine spark so that you can understand the hour you live and you can pray, watch and work according to my commands. 
36. I bless you. Each of the lamentations of humanity is heard by your Father, and each one is attended to of their pleas. 37. Once again I confirm the gifts so that, full of love for humanity, you can practice them. Wrap it in your love, in the peace that I leave you, and in the light that I shed on my word. I entrust it to you as an inheritance. 38. In you I bless all of humanity, as it is written, and I tell you, wait for the propitious times in which I will give you abundance and peace. 39. Today you are in the culmination of time, and I only strengthen you so that you can speed up the test. Also the promise is present in each one of you that after the atonement there will be peace, and all will be the blessing, and it will be the beginning of the new path that humanity has to take towards spirituality. 40. My Divine Spirit will gather the fruit that you will cultivate through your spiritual mission. 41. You are the tireless workers who have cultivated the golden seed which I have entrusted to you in this third era, and of this good seed you will come to show me. I contemplate it, and in spirit I see that some of you have understood me, and with my teaching and my wisdom you are going to become the beloved disciples who are going to go in my representation on roads everywhere giving the good news to your brothers. The others also show me the effort that, through the test you have taken, in which your spirit has known how to overcome and bend everything that you have found, because you have heard my voice that has made you shudder, and that has not let you go back to sleep in your way. 42. You have risen up in haste to my call to listen to my mandate, which is the law that I have in your hearts. Come to record and full of regret, you have been able to recognize that the times had surprised you and that you had hidden this work so great and so sublime of incalculable value that I have entrusted to your spirit. Moreover, your repentance has reached me. My judge's gaze has contemplated that your spirit has mourned the lost time, and at the last moment you implore forgiveness, mercy, and charity. 43. Thus I receive those who, having awakened from their deep sleep, show me your purpose of fulfillment and obedience, because you recognize that I have entrusted a delicate mission to your spirit, and that the world needs you to raise your plan so that through your channel it reaches salvation and comes out of its abyss to recreate itself with the light that you have contemplated in this third era. 44. I have prepared and clothed you anew with the greatest gifts. My light has illuminated your heart and your mind and in your consciousness you feel the responsibility that you carry within my work to rise as envoys of my divinity making known to men the peace they have sought in different ways, so that in my name you may give life to the spirits who have died to the life of grace through the centuries. For this I have called you people of Israel, and my word has echoed among you like a sounding bell through the spokesman, but not all of you have understood. But those who have interpreted my will have risen to me, to receive the mandates that have to run in life, to know me and to know themselves, to free themselves from the bondage that their spirits have carried through the centuries. 45. You are the spirits that carry the freedom that only my charity can give you, and you will never be slaves or fall when you get up fully and unify your spirit with mine. 46. I want you to feel my peace and my love and that with this love you strengthen yourselves so that your plant does not stop anymore, but always keep going until you reach the top of the mountain, so that with the elevation and the harmony that exists between your spirit and mine, you can contemplate how much humanity has needed my charity for your conduct, and be the messenger of my great charities, of my revelations that as the Holy Spirit I have given you. 47. 
It is my will that as a soldier, apostle, disciple, and worker, you go and get up my children who are waiting for the moment of their liberation, who hope like you do to find the table prepared with the bread of life. This humanity has felt only the severity of bad times and miseries have crept into his spirit. It is the time in which the world shakes, because great is his purification, pain awakens him, and he himself realizes that my word that has been written, it has been fulfilled. 48. This humanity is awakening in the midst of its own pain to contemplate the light of a new day. But you, beloved people, in fulfillment of my word, you will be my witnesses, and you will carry this message of peace everywhere. You will show all again the way of salvation. 49. Israel, the fight that your spirit has sustained with the darkness has been great. You have risen to follow my footprints, and you have been surprised by the evidence. Some of you have understood me, and you have recognized each other, because you have contemplated that my work has no stain, that it is white as snowflakes, and full of zeal and spiritual yearnings. You rise up to make humanity able to recreate itself in my work. Others who recreate with my teaching, they have not penetrated the true sense that my word carries. They have not understood what it is that I expect from each one of my chosen ones. 50. I want to contemplate you spiritually unified. I want to find in your heart the fruit of the love that I have surrendered. I want to contemplate your hand joined to my right hand. The time is coming when you have to give proof of my presence among your brothers, in which you will speak to them with a clear word, full of light and truth, showing them your heart as the abode of my divine spirit, and making them know that you are the bearer of spiritual complacencies that in this time have spilled from my treasure room. 51. Rise up, Israel, as the Son of Light, who has overcome the darkness, that has interposed in your path. Show the world your regeneration, your spirituality, because I have clothed you with strength. Wake up with your good example and with your prayer to your brothers who sleep and speak to them in imitation of my divine spirit. You will not be they that blaspheme, nor the hearts hardened before my love and before the love of your fellow men, because in you I have poured out my grace and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, so that you may be multiplied like good seed. 52. I receive the effort that your spirit has taken in this time to become my servant, and at the end of your day I will give you the award that you have carved. It will be the crown of laurels in your spirit. I have promised you that if you make me present with an atom of understanding and obedience, I will be with you. I will decorate you and give you that which corresponds to you as children of the light, as the chosen ones in this third era, as those whom I have cleansed with my divine blood, so that you may be the ones who bear witness to the Master. 53. You yourselves have scrutinized, and you have contemplated your weakness and imperfection. For a moment your faith was lacking, and the tests have surprised you. But you have shuddered before my divine gaze that contemplates the most recondite of your being. I want you to feel the good that my spirit gives to yours, for what you have carved and worked according to my law, according to my divine mandate, and in exchange for your effort, for the pain that you have following me, when facing trials and overcoming them, I entrust you with an invaluable jewel, my wisdom. 54. As the Holy Spirit, I pour out my essence on you, but make an effort each day so that your spirit reach great elevation and your heart greater spirituality, because it is my will that you, Israel, be an example clean before your brothers and give testimony of me with your works. Show the fruit of salvation for the Spirit. Give the message of my peace among humanity. 55. I have purified and gathered you together at this time to give you the Apostle's garment, 
the soldier's garment to adorn to your spirit with my grace and with my light. For you my work will not be torn nor mocked. I leave this responsibility among you so that by your example the multitudes may rise to the life of grace so that humanity hear my call and come before my presence because I am waiting for it. 56. My sword of light is fighting and conquering the darkness. I am preparing the roads so that you get up with clarity, fulfilling my law within my divine work. I have entrusted you with the wealth of my charity so that your heart is moved by the pain and misery of humanity. I have made you to contemplate all the pain that the world and the neediness of the spirits in this time, so that you watch and you pray, so that you work manifesting my truth, cultivating virtue in your heart. 57. I do not want you to feel me far away, because I have told you that because of your spirituality, all of you will feel me, your spirit will listen to my voice and spiritually you will contemplate my presence. So I want to see your spirits unified to mine for an eternity, because this is my will. 58. Prepare yourselves, Israel, so that with obedience and love you may be at my service, for I have anointed you to be the true disciples. 59. In you I am building the temple of the Holy Spirit and preparing your arrival in the new Jerusalem. 60. Of the fruit of my wisdom, give it to your brothers to savor, who with good will approach. Give it to all that ask. Give it to the first and to the last. Feed them my peace. Watch over it and share it among humanity as testimony of my presence among you. My peace be with you.